Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. First of all, thank you for spending time with me today and doing this podcast. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So will you, you have a very unique profession. Will mm-hmm. you talk a little bit about what you do and, and how you got into doing this? Sure. So I run a life coach training and business development company for life coaches. Mm-hmm. And my passion and the specialty of Atmana Coaching Academy is intuition. So I really believe that inside each human being is this incredible power that has the ability to lead and guide our lives in interesting ways, in in ways that maybe defy rational thought, but are nonetheless really, really practical. And so in my coaching practice, um, I have a background in mental health. I noticed that when I allowed myself to listen to the guidance from the center voice, my life improved and my clients life to improve. So I thought to myself, why don't we just start using this thing, uh, you know, in earnest as a true coaching skill mm-hmm. to help people improve their lives and, and really return them to the truth of who they are. So, so that's what I spend my time doing, helping people do that. So I think there's probably a lot of people out there that would say intuition, sure. like, is that really a thing? Do we, do we really, what is that? Yeah, so I I love that question. It's a great question. Um, So when I give speeches or talk about it or tell people about intuition, I've yet to meet one person when I say, have you ever had an experience where you just knew that you needed to get out of the experience? Mm -hmm. Or have you ever met someone and you're just instantly, oh, this person's for me, Mm -hmm. right? Or have you ever just been talking to someone and they ask you a question, maybe they're struggling with something, and out of your mouth rolls like the most incredible advice. And you're like, wait, where did that come from? That's intuition. Mm -hmm. So it's this experience we have, we've all experienced it, but because it isn't a conversation we have, right? Mm -hmm. We're not taught to think about it like this innate human skill. And that is exactly what intuition is. The research shows that intuition is a stable, baseline trait for every human being in the world. Just like human beings are born with the ability to speak language, we're all born blinking, we're all born breathing, we all are born intuiting. Mm -hmm. So intuition, you can think of it like we're all bilingual. It's an energetic language we speak without words and we all know how to do it. Some of us do it better than others Mm -hmm. because just like some of us are born with more musical talent or athletic ability, Um, You know, but at the end of the day, it's about understanding that we do have the ability to sense and read information in our environment that's useful for us in, you know, living our lives and bettering our lives. So it's basically, you know, the the practical definition is knowing something without knowing, you know, without knowing how, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and then just allowing what you're feeling to inform your decision making process as much as you allow other methods of data collection, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Which are kind of our logical, cognitive, intellectual way of making decisions or living our lives. It's just saying, okay, well, the feelings I have and the meaning I ascribe to things, that's just as valid. Mm -hmm. It's just as valid and real. I think as a woman, as you were talking, I was thinking there's been many times over the years where I've had not the opposite sense of, oh, I'm drawn to someone, but oh, that's scary. There's something about that that I need to stay away from Mm -hmm. and validating that it's okay and actually paying attention to that can be a really, really great safety net and powerful thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're really the only one who knows what's best for you, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we do, we do have these intuitive inklings, and I think it is about giving ourselves permission to say, wait a minute, no, I can trust myself. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a scene in the movie Dumb and Dumber, which I'm dating myself, I love that movie. But there's a scene in the, the movie where he, uh, he's talking to his buddy about going and uh, talking to Mary, the girl he's in yeah. love with, yeah. and he's like, what are you gonna do? And he's like, 
I'm going to sit out the, sit at the bar, put out the vibe. Like <laughs> we all talk about vibes, right? We right. all know that that is real. So what my passion is, is just saying, why don't we just make this, why don't we talk about this as a valid skill? Mm -hmm. When I was in graduate school, um, I, working with trauma clients and just people who've been through really the worst of the worst. And I'm trying to rely on my clinical skill and remember the step-by-step -step pieces of training I've been taught to use that are going to help, you know? And I'm like, it's not working. None of this crap is working. And my supervisor looked at me and said, just go with your gut. Yeah. And I thought, well, I've been doing that before I got here to get this fancy pants degree. <laughs> so that's when I realized, you know, we all know whether it's Dumb and Dumber or somebody with a PhD, just listen to it. <laughs> and I think as women, where we can really like street test this, when it comes to our kids, would you ever curtail your intuition? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Yeah, never. So that's kind of a test. When the, when the rubber really meets the road, we know who knows. Mm -hmm. And we are not willing to betray that voice for our children. I think we should do that for ourselves and other people as well. So how do you teach people to do that? The first, oh gosh, I could say so much to this. Um, so I have like a, a six step framework, but the first step really is to acknowledge that you do have this skill. And I like to call it a skill because that's what it is. It's not some supernatural wooey thing you know it's wooey. not it's wooey. not wooey although i'm so into the woo like girl <laughs> sign me up for woo all day okay i love it but it actually isn't a wooey thing at all we we understand I, I could bore you with exactly how it works i can literally explain how we um send and receive you know accurate energetic or intuitive information but the first step is just to acknowledge that you do have this ability and then from there, the next is to start paying attention to how you feel and how you sense things. So um, one of the misconceptions with intuition is that it's illogical, that it contradicts uh, logic or reason. And that's actually not true. It's non-logical. It doesn't contradict it. It complements it, but it works on a different operating system. So this is like Windows and a Mac right? Mac is intuition. Windows is, is <laughs> logic, right? Yeah. So it's to realize that, oh, okay, it's just, it's not illogical. It's just non-logical. And I have to learn how to use this new operating system. Just like if you switch from a PC user to a Mac, you have to learn how that operating system works. So the first step to it is to start paying attention to your inner world. Our left brain, our logical self, and our five senses that we're you know, used to perceiving the world with, our exterior, it's to pick up on information out here, right? But there's this rich, vast inner world that's informing our life every moment that's on the inside. And so we have to cultivate inner awareness and hold valid our own experience and really be in touch with ourselves and, and who we are. So feelings, thoughts, you know, all of that, to start paying attention to that. So what brought you to this point? So obviously that was a shift yeah. going into coaching. Mm -hmm. Was there something? Yeah. 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 So are you ready to go woo? <laughs> sure. Let's go woo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's, it's a very personal story. Um, you know, I, I think we all have traumatic experiences, I think, that are sort of forks in the road. Yes. And for me, I always knew that I wanted to work with people. I started my career as a career coach. I've always loved being in deep relationship with people. Um, so I always knew I wanted to do something with that. Um, it, when I was, oh my goodness, how old was I? Uh, I can't even remember, but in 2007, that's when it was, I was diagnosed with a chronic illness. Very, very, very painful. And I had a surgery a year for five years, right? My first surgery was in 2008. And each time the Western medicine doctors, you know, I was straight in that paradigm. So I was the type of person, if I couldn't touch it, see it, smell it, taste it, and hear it, I, I did not want to have anything to do with it. I thought that that was foolishness. I'm a very practical, grounded person. I grew up in a very strict religious family, and I did not, I rejected those teachings. I saw the danger of blind belief, mm -hmm. and I was not doing that. No, sir, no, ma'am. 
but I was diagnosed with this illness and the doctors just, you know, they all had competing ideas about what was wrong with me and none of it worked. Fast forward to 2012, they told me to have this big major surgery that would help. They really, they were just like, we don't know what to do. So let's cut it out. Let's just take everything, right? Well, I was already in a very, very severe weakened state at that time. And I had learned how to meditate because I had read through the clinical literature that it was efficacious for pain management. And I was not gonna get hooked on opioids. And let me tell you what, my doctors were giving them to me like candy mm -hmm. because they didn't know how to help me. Right. So, and there they were desperate, I'm desperate, I don't blame them at all, but I recognized straight away, I am in trouble and these people cannot help me. So I had learned how to meditate and it was amazing. I found I could just drop into these states and it really helped with the pain. So I had one night after I had this surgery and it was a bit of a botched surgery. And I, I got to where I couldn't walk, I, I was retaining water. Um, and I thought, oh my God, I gotta call it, I gotta, I gotta go to the emergency room. And I thought to myself, Heather, they're not gonna be able to do anything to help you. You are gonna die. You are very close to losing your life. I had this moment where I realized I am in serious trouble. I am in serious trouble. And no sooner did I think that thought that I became furiously angry because I had spent my whole life trying to do the right thing, you know, be a good mother, be a good daughter, be a good sister, be a good person, right? And I was just absolutely livid mm -hmm. that I had done everything I had been told to do by people who knew better than me. And it was killing me, literally. And so as, as soon as I realized I might die, I thought, oh my goodness, well, you know what? In true me fashion, I said, nope. Okay, if that happens, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go get my husband. I did not want my daughter to find my body like I had seen my father in rigor mortis. I did not want that to happen. So I'm like, I'm gonna get Brandon. I'm gonna make sure that Ava doesn't find me. And then I realized you won't be able to protect your child from that because you're gonna be dead. And that's when I lost it. So I started praying and I said, you know, if there is a God out there, you're gonna answer me. I call it my Lieutenant Dan moment from Forrest Gump when he was on the shrimp and boat. Long story short, I started to meditate and pray and I had, a, I had an experience where I, you know, spoke to what I call God, right? Whatever people believe a higher power to be. And I heard a voice in my mind that said, Heather, you can remain in your anger and your bitterness for the remainder of your days, however long that might be, or you can choose grace and forgiveness, but the time is now, choose wisely. And I thought, well, hot damn, I'm getting somewhere. Cause that had never happened to me before. So I was really excited, but I knew I had a choice to make. And so um, I chose to forgive. I said, no matter what I do, I'm gonna go all the way. So if I choose anger, I'm gonna be the most angry person in the world. And if I choose grace and forgiveness, I'm gonna do that all the way too. And so I said to God, um, I'm okay. If I die tonight, thank you for the life you gave me. And I want nothing from you. I don't even want to be healed. It's okay, I'm all right, I love you, thank you. I fell asleep and I woke up the next morning completely healed. I've never had a problem since. I had some soreness in my stomach from the surgery, but I could walk, I was totally fine. So spontaneous remission is what they call that, right? And I did a ton of research on that, but what I found after this experience was that I could still hear that voice. Mm -hmm. And it would help, it, you know, and now I realize it's my own inner voice, right? Um, so that's what put me on this path. I was super fascinated with what did I just do? Clearly there's something inside of us humans that people aren't telling us about because I know that I had that experience and I know that I had listened to the doctors and I know that that didn't work, but I know this did. So that was what really got me on this path. And I'm a huge research nerd. So um, I wanted to just dig through the literature and figure out like, oh, okay, you know, how do we do this? And I studied the placebo effect and all of the, the, the mind's power to really connect us to our truth and receive healing from that. And so it was a very natural thing to include that ability for myself um, to use this faculty that I have, you know, in session with my clients. And now, of course, teach other coaches to do the same. So how does that impact you with your children? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so what's interesting about um, intuition is, you know, you it's very, very hard, I think, to use it to people you're attached to because you have your own ego and your own, you know, your own desires and your own wants. So um, it's, I think that it can be, it can be um, a useful tool, but if we get too attached to it, it can be just like everything else, a hot mess. But I do know this, as mothers, I think we have a really cool ability to know for our children, right? What's best for them, how we should be. Um, so I, I will always err on the side of listening to that voice. I'd rather make the gravest of mistakes than surrender in my own judgment, so. Yeah. Even when they don't respond. Even when they don't respond. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were, um, you know, before we started rolling, we were talking about teenage daughters. I have a teenage daughter and I'm like, wow, all of a sudden I am an absolute idiot. <laughs> Look how that happens. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. I do think, it, uh, you know, living an intuitive life has done one thing as a mom that I probably would have botched had I not had, you know, this guiding me, which is, I'm, I'm really able to allow my child to be who she is. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, and trust her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the questions that I always ask my guests is, do you remember when you achieved six figures? And do you remember emotionally how that felt? I do remember that. Um, it was, I, I guess it for me, it was this moment of, I just, I did it. Yeah. I did it. I can do this. And then I w it lasted for like the halo of that. It was fun mm -hmm. for like 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> and then you discover your next big goal. So yeah, I, um, I think we can all do it. We really can. And, but for me, it was really neat because I just thought, wow, you know, this is possible. We can really do this if we let ourselves work our process. So mm -hmm. yeah. So in this journey that you've had, so we have a lot of listeners that are aspiring to six figures some of them are there and this is really more where they are mm -hmm. counterparts really what would you say one maybe two lessons are in your journey to i think really just owning you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that you could relate to them that would impact where they are at the end of the day here's what i would say at the end of the day only you understand your vision and what you're called to create in the world. And you have to ferociously protect that and allow that to lead you. Um, you have to march to the tune of your own drummer. Mm -hmm. That's why you decided to do this to begin with. So why, why stop now? Why stop doing that now? So I would just say, ferociously do what your heart tells you to do. Um, I'll touch really quick, and you don't have to just take my word on that. The research on entrepreneurial intuition is positively fascinating. And the people who are serially successful repeat entrepreneurs, we're talking the Steve Jobs of the world, the Richard Bransons, they all self-report that the number one skill they rely on the most is intuition. So at the end of the day, you've really got to trust yourself and know that the world might be telling you to, to zig when you know you need to zag. zag. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to work out. That's your superpower to six figures. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. So the other question I always ask is, podcast or book, and what do you recommend the most frequently? Is there one that you recommend to people on a regular basis? This podcast. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> this podcast. I would say a book that I thought was that is just so fun to read that really changed my life, and you can read it in nugget form, is the book How Rich People Think by okay. Steve Seibold. Mm -hmm. Have you read it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when I read that, I thought, oh, that is so cool because it gives you the... The, the mindset shift of someone, and I had so many of those mindset shifts around money. Like I'm like, man, I have mediocre money mindset. So that one was really good. I'd recommend that to anybody. Is there another podcast aside from this one that you listen to on a oh, regular basis? Oh my goodness. Okay, a friend of mine, her name is Kelly Hollingsworth. Um, I think it's how, to, it's how to Make More Money, Kelly Hollingsworth. She started, was one of, she's, she was either the first woman or one of the first women to start her own hedge fund. And she is absolutely brilliant and unapologetic about allow, allowing herself to embrace financial freedom. So I'd recommend her podcast too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what am I not asking? What, I don't what know. is something that you would want to relay that I didn't ask you? 
I th yeah, I, I guess we could close with this. Embrace your inner leader as well. Um, I think the world is a much better place with women co-owning leadership with our male counterparts. Um, so embrace your inner leader and understand that this isn't really about you. Your business is about the people that you're serving. I believe that we have a moral and ethical responsibility to be successful in our lives because we cannot lift others if we are not giving ourselves permission to lift ourselves. So, you know, just be unapologetic about that and also find your tribe. Nobody does this alone. Nobody does this alone. So, um, you know, cooperation and community, not competition, is what's going to help get you there. Oh. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com. 